Hello, and welcome to Only Mr. God Knows 2024, Episode 2. As I say every week, do not watch Eurovision. Okay, today we have gotten uh, um, two guests, two, uh, an old classic on the council, Chris Wade. Hello, Chris. Hello, glad to be back. Glad to be listening to Eurovision again. <laughs> and a new and off-requested member of the council after smashing on the Eurodance episode, oh, it's you. Jackie. <laughs> Thank you. Happy to be back. Happy to once again um, meet in the middle of where my interest <laughs> in Europe and your interest in, mu- in music cross, you know? As uh, I can happy to be the, back. <laughs> the intersection of Europe and music lies Eurovision. <laughs> It does feel like this would be like, you know, a British pate, like newsreel or whatever. Like, yeah, they're making music now. <laughs> Have you heard? It's it's great, though, because just like the Eurovision episode, I'm just listening to this and I'm like, there's so much America going on here in so many confusing ways that yes. break, break, breaking down what's going on here musically, what decades different countries are stuck in, like... All of that is is incredibly fascinating to me, and like the 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 just just the the math of like how different countries ended up with what genres they picked, and, and all of that is going to be fascinating to discuss. The, uh, going through the yeah. the mega mix this year, it it really feels like, and I got a little bit of a sense of this last year that the Eurovision exists in like an alternate timeline where the last 25 years of music didn't happen. And we just repeated 1999 over and over until it like Some of it happened. Into, yeah. selectively. Like mm-hmm. it, it's very fascinating, which countries are like trend hopping. What eras, like some, some people seem to be like relatively current. Some people seem to be like dated in incredibly weird ways. There's a lot of cultural appropriation going on in different directions that we can talk about. It's I think, yeah. Fascinating yeah. stuff, for sure. Absolutely. And like, I will, I will be able to chime in about whether that is reflective of the current music scene or whether it's for just sure. the competition in that country is behind. This is true. Like, like immediately, we'll, I'll have a lot of questions about Ireland, for example, and the voting process <laughs> of this. Because like, it seems to me like, certain countries there's different priorities in terms of what gets uplifted there's different uh um sort of yeah i'm fascinated yeah and also like different countries have different ideas of what winning the eurovision looks like for them for like that's very clear that's very yeah (laughs) because for ireland at the moment uh, the the moment for ireland the big thing at the moment is just get into the final we don't care if we actually win the whole thing just get into the final you um, said last year Ireland is the most winningest or tied with have, Germany? No, God, no, not Germany. Well, Germany has a lot because they've been it since the beginning. Uh, tied with Sweden now Sweden, of as course, of last yes. year. Because um, that was the big thing about last year. Sweden won again and now they're tied for most wins with us, which is seven, I believe. It's interesting you say that they're just trying to make the 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 top part this year or whatever because it really does feel like their their pick this year is kind of like eh, we're kind of oh, we we could, we're doing whatever we want with this one yes. you know. <laughs> All right, let's just get into it with fucking Ireland because like <laughs> there's a lot to discuss for sure. We yes. we won. We got most of our wins. I think we've won seven times, and I believe four of those wins, if not five of them, all happened in the nineties. Um. So we've been out of it for a hot minute. We were not prepared for like what happened in the 2000s when like the Eastern Bloc fell, uh, all the Eastern European <laughs> countries entered and they decided to do this crazy thing, which is actually send celebrities because they're like, shit, the economy has been ripped out from under us. Touring Poland isn't fucking enough anymore. I need to like <laughs> expand my reach beyond Poland. But like at the same time, they were like successful and like, well rehearsed and practiced musicians mm. and then we were still selling like people who would sing to your nan about how nice sweaters are yeah, uh, that, that yeah. Sense. um the the well the the ireland my, uh entry this year is certainly not singing to your nan about sweaters no because <laughs> it might be the, uh, the i'm not uh, sure the if opposite this, of that vibe i'm not sure this is a figure that has penetrated america are you guys at all? Are you either of you familiar with uh, Louis Walsh? No, I don't think so. Okay, so he um, he's the man behind Boyzone. Uh, if that's at all familiar to you, 
and he and Westlife. I don't and think Jedward. Uh, I know Jedward. You know Jedward. Oh, Jedward. Jedward. There we go. That's one I recognize. Yeah. Okay, but Louis Walsh actually fell into Jedward by fucking mistake. He would never make Jedward on his own. He would make Boy's Own on his own. <laughs> Boy's Own. Gotcha. Uh, <laughs> Jedward, like because so that then, was his hit. that was his accidental hit. You know. Not Absolutely. It. And he's had his fingers in the Eurovision selection process in Ireland for I'm far he too was long. A, uh, a judge on the X Factor. I'm yeah. getting the I'm getting the whole picture here. Oh, yes. absolutely. Like I've heard stories that like he's single handedly tried to ruin people's careers for saying that Boyzone was a stupid band name. Um, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Just, I don't. I don't. I. I. When I'm thinking about you know a group of young men singing, I don't want to like be thinking about their boy zones, you know. All right. So I guess I want to start this conversation because Chris, we had an episode with you last year. Good. Yes. I recommend it, and we will circle back to you in a second. But Jackie, what mm-hmm. is your experience with Eurovision? Um, my experience is fairly limited. Uh, we've done uh, an episode of the podcast where we discuss some entries, uh, but uh, I. I mostly have not engaged with the contest on a year to year basis beyond just like occasionally, like when the finals are happening, it'll sort of bubble up to the surface, but I've never like followed it super closely. Uh, and yeah, I, I was really fascinated by digging into all of this because it is, yeah, like really interesting how it runs like parallel to culture, like alternate dimension, like you're talking about, like, it's similar to what we talked about in the on the um the your the other episode that we did the Eurodance episode and mm. what we've talked about in general it, on our podcast of like novelty songs, pop culture detritus songs that are like very blatantly trying to sound like other shit. Like so, all mm. of this stuff is just like this is this is a wonderful zone for my brain to be living in to be <laughs> hearing a song and being like, okay, what is this trying to rip off? What does this say about the weird geopolitics going on in this whole event? Like, I'm re- I'm ready to cook on this stuff for sure. Absolutely, for, that is very similar to what I enjoy, but I add the extra element of like, okay, can I try and predict how like a grandmother in Slovakia will feel about this song. <laughs> um, can I, can I map this? How successful will this be? Um, okay, good, good. And Chris, uh, a, a year on, how do you feel about uh, uh, your first Eurovision watching experience? Uh, well, you'd, yeah, I mean, it w- the first one was very much like an anthropological tour through a, a realm of music that I had no uh, indication of, but now I feel a little more grounded at least feel like I have a base uh, baseline for a lot of this stuff. Uh, but it is, it is still, yeah, delightfully foreign in, in weird ways, even though everything is, as Jackie says, like a mutation of various types of, of strains of, of recognizable pop music. It is all like, it's, it's, it's hard for the American mind to comprehend that there could be that many regional differences in a place that is essentially the same size as ours. I but think it, I think the only like cultural institution I could think of that like kind of compares to what Eurovision is like is the Oscar original song uh, competition, right? Like imagine so like every year at the Oscars, there's like five songs from movies. One of them is a song that you've heard that like is successfully used in the movie, and the other two is like Diane Warren wrote a song for the Hot Cheetos movie. <laughs> yeah, uh, and this is this is like if every single country in Europe got to commission their own like Oscar original song candidate that then had to compete against each other. It's incredible. Yes, I, that's a, that's a great comparison. So, songs that indicate real songs but are not quite real songs <laughs> exactly like there's some semblance of like there's some semblance of that this is being thrown away but also diane warren does really want to win an oscar for it <laughs> right yeah, yeah. like it's trying to win a competition but also like it's not a song song yes oh god yeah okay so this this is uh this gets into like i think this is definitely i feel like an attitude amongst like Britain for a long time and also Ireland tries to convince itself that we think the same thing of like there is this aspect of like it's kind of foreign it's a little weird we don't really understand it but then like you fall into the pit of thinking it's like lesser but then you're like no like some of these songs are charting across like eight of the countries involved 
on like a reaching number one and shit. So I uh, yeah, I was just gonna ask that, that dude. So like, do your vision songs actually like chart and get like radio play? And I guess yep. if they do, is it like very regionally specific? Um, it would depend. So like, um, so there's countries. Basically, one of the rules that has been like understood, like the best Ireland has done in recent years in Eurovision is when we sent Jedward um, and people still dress up as Jedward and stuff. And they came. That is the only song in recent memory that we have sent that was also number one in our charts. Mm -hmm. And there's this kind of thing of like, if your country likes the song. Like you should say something you like kind is kind of the yeah vibe. because you, you you need people to vote at home like American Idol so you want something that has its own built in like promotion system behind it exactly and then like the countries that have like the best national selection competitions always not only will like the winner reach number one like everyone who participate will be like top twenty. Like yeah. Italy and Finland and stuff usually, and I know. and I know that it can like, especially in the European context, create celebrities because like I think it was a couple of years ago, Monaskin uh, essentially yep. rose to popularity yes. via being a, a Eurovision band. So, um, yeah, it definitely makes sense that the, that like a sort of side act slash like struggling artist slash maybe famous person can use this as a vehicle to like launch their uh either comeback or career or whatever and then get popularity sort of locally and i and i can also see how some of these songs might like six some, so some of them are bops you know like a couple yeah. of these I, I i i totally could imagine them taking off a ton of them have had afterlifes on tiktok that like a, also there's one of these immediately that i'm like <laughs> yeah that's a tiktok song for sure um yeah so and there is also like to that point there's a real cinderella story this year as well with uh, um i'm just gonna bring it up croatia um oh boy <laughs> uh that croatia was one of my favorite songs last year as well uh i really like this one uh it, again it's like the the bizarre mix of influences where this is like a, like almost like a crab core song like an attack attack song about leaving <laughs> your little like croatian home and moving to the big city like like giving up the life of being a croatian peasant <laughs> yeah. yeah oh yeah the 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 croatian selection is incredible uh i i really i really think the sort of yeah um former soviet kind of eastern Bloc countries are really bringing it hard in this competition for sure um yeah Cause like okay, so like the the story with him, um, like first of all, he yeah he's doing like a, a an emigration song, which is a real like strategy because you can't vote for your own country. But like Croatia, I think has like the highest percentage of people who like leave the country. That um, makes sense. So he's going for the diaspora. Um, he was he lives in Austria himself, and mm. like we should clarify to the listeners, we're of course referring to baby lasagna. Baby Lasagna, that is a yes. Um, baby Lasagna's rim tim taggy dim, um, <laughs> and uh, a song about like having to leave your country town or whatever and move to the city or move to another country. And yeah, he was put on the reserve list for the national selection, uh, and then someone dropped out of like the hand picked like songs that were going to compete, and then like he entered was got more votes than all the other songs combined and like there's been calls for like people at the national broadcaster in croatia to resign i was like why was this guy on the reserve list this should have been like the one you put forward immediately um his girlfriend made the music video for him uh um, i mean the music video is pretty good yeah it's a shoestring budget kind of thing and like yeah. it would be croatia's first win um I I'm see that's all very interesting to me because I'm sure like the also the the anxiety it's a it's a fun song it's very lighthearted but I'm sure the actual anxieties around immigrant emigrating and relocation and all the uh, things that that it carries with it within the broader European context right now is like very real so uh, I'm I'm sure the you know it, while <laughs> you know it, again like the the 
things that this might be pulling from in America, you know, like leaving your shitty Midwestern town and like moving to New York or whatever, you know, that's still like here in America yeah. versus like, I have to become an economic refugee in Austria, like the, the death star of the European Union from my position in the relative periphery of like a little Croatia. Yeah. Like one of the things I try to do to like map like how successful this song be is like watch a lot of reaction videos. There's tons of reaction videos. The national broadcaster in Croatia released one where they just got like a bunch of old people to listen to the Croatian song. And a lot of them were just like, yeah, there's not, there's not young people anymore. Is there, there's not really anything for them to do here. (laughs) And it's just like, Oh, okay. Can give like game of throne tours of split or whatever. Basically, yeah. Oh, no, like, I have a friend who works in Croatia, and he's just like, yeah, it's a beautiful country, wonderful. As soon as tourism season stops, it's the most, you just want to kill yourself. Uh, (laughs) Like, nothing fucking happens. Anyway, um, so now that we've gotten a lot of this stuff out of the way, how how do we want to approach it? Do you want, you have a top 10, Chris. Do you have, Jackie, do you have a top 10? I don't, but I have, I have some favorites that I want to hit and we can kind of circle back. I think if there are any that haven't been discussed. Perfect. All right. So then in that case, Chris, can I have your number 10, please? Yes. And I will just say, I mean, we've done a lot of like context here, but I will just say that like, these are the ones that stood out to me, and I think that Jackie would probably agree because you brought up the the like car commercial number ones. This year, the baseline for any male song is essentially Imagine Dragons, and the baseline yeah. for yeah. any, any uh, right female song, yeah, yeah, yeah. And there the are like baseline four for any... or five Imagine Dragons cover songs. On we're imagining episode. dragons yeah. over here. Yeah, we can we the, can do it. <laughs> which I which has made me really realize that it's not like. That the corollary to that is that Imagine Dragons has to be the most European coded American ba- band, right? Like they are, they are delivering a European style rock straight out of the heart of Las Vegas, aren't they? Ve- I think Vegas that guys? totally yeah. tracks. Yeah. Yes, they are. They are Las Vegas guys, and I think it tracks in that like Maniskin are like this twisted mutation of Imagine Dragons, right? Yeah, like it. It, it definitely feels like funhouse mirror european version of and and then yeah like you're saying the the new orleans not the north the the las vegas aspect of imagine dragons does make them kind of perfect for like the funhouse mirror vision of america then being yeah. reflected back yeah it's very and, like, and then the, the, the baseline female act is like sia like 2017 era like yeah sia. Very uh, Katy Perry, I will rise yeah. sort of zone. Yeah. It, like generic those, those inspirational. Those yeah. Mm-hmm. With like maybe with like, some kind of like thumpy faux EDM uh, synth bass that they're singing over. Mm-hmm. Uh, so those were like, like. Do you have that kind of like phenomenon? Are you like aware of that in the States of just like this kind of thing that just like this, this cultural institution, this musical product or movie that just kind of keeps going. You don't really know why. Like, for example, like. I remember finding out that like all the Adam Sandler movies that are just kind of like dog shit are like keep going because they play like so fucking well in Latin America after they've been translated. Interesting. Um, like, cause imagine dragons definitely feels like something like that. Like it does kind of, if I'm wandering around in America paying true. attention to music, I'm like who's sustaining this? And it's like, I, th- I, th- I think what it is is I think imagine dragons is really good at like conveying emotion, even if you can't speak English. Right. Like, I imagine if you're in another country, you're just like, okay, I don't even need to know what that guy is saying. I can understand what he's emoting just by the sheer effort that he puts into every vocal. Yeah. And, like, I think that probably helps it translate in, like, a Marvel blockbusters overseas sort of sense, sure. you know? Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, so that was, like, my baseline. And basically anything that, like, exceeded the 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 sia imagine dragons line the, this is when i started mm. paying attention so i, I think i, I think there are, there are two other can, can i can i say the two other kind yeah. of like larger types of song archetypes that i identified here um the other one is uh uh for, what's the name of it uh the the shakira um world cup song yes you know what i'm talking about like vaguely world music or caribbean or african yeah. music influenced like everybody get together uh pop anthem that's that's one that i definitely yeah, identified here and then the last one of course is uh 
just straight up Eurodance. Just people yes. that are like, it yeah. is still 1996. And well, that's we a good transition because the first song that I want to call out is the uh, Austrian song, Kayleen's yeah. We Will Rave, uh, yes. which is just straight 90s Euro, uh, Eurodance rave banger. Got the transitions with the acid bass lines. The music video for it, they're literally doing like the gay, the Simpsons gay steel mill yes. video. It's just like a bunch of like ripped shirtless guys hammering in an abandoned steel mill. And, the, and then oh it comes God, to this yes. lead singer being like, we will rave. It's, like, <laughs> yeah. it's very well worked hard, dance hard. Kayleen walked into a studio in Vienna and was just like, so what do you want for your music video? And she was like, I want the entirety of the Chippendales dancers. Just <laughs> yeah, really exactly. close to me. Thank you very much. In the Footloose warehouse. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, it's an air hanger that probably did something horrific in World War yes, II. Let's right. not talk about it. <laughs> yes, this is true. Um, yeah, this is, this is incredible. I really, really loved this for exactly the... I also think this is a great example of something else that I noticed is the like discrepancy and production value that exists within this competition. Mm -hmm. Like comparing this to the last song where we talk about like a shoestring budget and Mm -hmm. they're like giving it all for the performance and they're wearing costumes, but it's like, they're just performing on the stage. They don't have a music video. Whereas this is, is full is so much effort and gloss being put into something that is so dated. It's beautiful. Yeah, there's like definitely some sort of Eurodance revival because while I agree that there's a lot of it in the competition this year, there was a lot more in like the national selections. Like yeah. everyone, there was like a real big like Eurodance kind of banger, including with an element that like Killeen's We Will Rave does not have, which is the kind of like gibberish chorus, like Your Dabba Dee Bad Dies or whatever. <laughs> like there was a Norwegian song that came like second or third in their final that was like, a hundred percent that um but yeah well, it also rules just like especially when you have some of these songs that are so clearly trying to be like here's our little message or our idea or how we're like and then some of them are just like sexy sexy fun time yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> like, th- there's another one later where there's literally uh like police dancing and partying with like people and it, and it's, it goes back to the euro dance concept of we can throw a sexy party that solves a uh, world conflict yeah, yeah the the wall has fallen time for the sexy party yeah yeah <laughs> yes So uh, I don't think that I wouldn't necessarily vote for this to uh, win, but I think I appreciate what they're going for here. I think it's a very competent version of this. Mm. uh, And Mm. I think the music video is funny. So, you know, honorable mention to Kayleen. Kayleen. That has a, it's entered into my rotation. I can, no, no, I'll reveal at the end, actually. Mm. What's your number? uh, Hmm? Oh, what's my next number? Yes, Mm. go for it. Uh, okay, this is kind of a negative one, but I had to signal it out because it's so weird, and especially the video for it is, is so weird. Uh, this is the Australian entry. I, I knew video. that was coming up next before you even said it. When you said video being a little uncomfortable, I'm like, yeah, it's, yeah, I know when this is. Yes, which is, this is like very replacement level, like, uh, kind of like fake Bruno Mars maybe, but the video is just like two people kind of naked shot from the nude shot from the chest up kind of like smizing at the camera and not saying anything or da- it's it's a very strange thing and i'm yeah. not really sure what it's supposed to go for it's it's they're just trying to do like my understanding with the video is they're just trying to do like one step above a lyric video mm-hmm. basically yes. like they they didn't have the budget to to do like an actual music video I think it's definitely trying to, my understanding of it is basically do a like low, low effort Michael Jackson, black or white sort of thing where it's like, we are making a song for like, 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 like that connects like the indigenous history of Australia with this smiling white guy next to this person. It's, it's very fascinating. And I th- this is just super Australian in like the production of it. Like these guys are like a dance pop duo from Australia who made the song. And it's just very like everything that kind of sucks about Australian dance culture is what I would say. <laughs> yeah. 
It yeah, does. I'm watching the video right now, and the part of the video where, like, the two of them have these, like, purple souls that leave their body and kiss and then, like, go back into their body, it's incredible. Yeah. So this is this is your... This is your... Uh, um, you're right, like, the black and white thing or, like, the musical equivalent of that one gif of Michael Jackson putting down the gun while, like, smiling, because the, the song is One Macaulay, which is the... I believe an Aboriginal word for blood, one blood, and it's kind mm-hmm. of you're like we're yeah. all the same. Going back to the Shakira, uh, vague like gesturing toward we are all one people, uh, world music pop thing. Yeah, yeah. You you said this a moment ago, Jackie, but I was also watching this and being like, okay, so are they going to morph into different people like the the black or white video? <laughs> that is that is the do? funny part of it is that th- they have just a little bit of like After Effects work going on in this yeah. video, but clearly uh, it kind of does feel like they shot this footage imagining like, okay, so in post we're going to like have these two faces become one, right? And they're like, yeah, oh, we're we, like we, Twitch or we can, become we multiple can, we, faces, yeah. We can we can make their like spirits kiss real quick. To, is that is that gonna do it? <laughs> just, just in the VFX booth, just yeah. for, like spitballing. Uh, 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 anyway, very goofy. The song is not not good either. It's just classic Eurovision goofiness. It does strike me as a band that you do see at a festival that you had no intention of seeing. Mm-hmm. It's just like you're wandering around. You pop into like one little tent or venue. You're like, oh, I guess this is happening, and then you kind of wander <laughs> off. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Then, uh, uh, um, yeah, what do you got next? My my next one is the Croatians. So I'm going kind of in. I was just pulling these out in order alphabetically. So uh, next is mm. uh, we went from Australia to Croatia. Baby lasagna. We've rim Tim Tagi Dim. We've already kind of talked about this one, uh, but I find this very charming. And this my this would probably end up being in my uh, my actual like top five or three if I if I had to vote. Um, I like what they're going for here, and I think it's well executed, and it's weird <laughs> in, a, in a musical way uh, can, can, can i make a guess on what the next pick is going to be are, are yes. we going to estonia next yes we are of course <laughs> five minus t and pull up uh i don't even know how, how to how to define what they're doing here but i i like it it's like a goth country rap that kind of starts like a like estonian lose yourself or something <laughs> there's a big um Caravan Palace, the like electro swing group, uh, is kind of what I thought of here, where it's like this weird mix of like strings and like a dance beat. But yeah. it goes way harder than Caravan Palace does. This kind of rules. Yeah, so this is you were asking about like the charts beforehand. This is one that has uh, um fucking dominated basically oh, let's within, go. Est- within Estonia. Um because so, oh man, like Estonia has vowel harmony. I don't know how to pronounce anything, but like five <laughs> minus. Um, I know two eyes is different from one eye, but I don't really understand how. But five minus is, uh, um, I believe five minus is the rap group. And um, pull up is a folk group, a folk duo. The, the guy with the weird string things. Exactly. Um, the song is called We Don't Touch Drugs. Um, and well, that's unfortunate, it, th- but you know, no, you, th- they can't, the, you can't, all, if, if the song itself is good, you know, I guess I can't argue with the message. <laughs> well, no, the, the joke is that they're saying it so often and in the song that it's clear that they do. Oh, okay. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they're, they're a little like, tongue in cheek. Yes. Um, and also like with five minutes, like, previous career as rap musicians in estonia it's been a lot of like we do drugs um in your in your classic rap sense the the two of them came together for this one song it like has been number one for the entire like national selection process that it was like it wasn't a fair competition and the success of the song has caused them to plan and announce that they're going to make an album together the two groups so they're just like we're going to do more of this. That's People really love sick. Estonian rap slash folk music coming together. Let's go. <laughs> I'm trying to, yeah, like, I think that's I'm, why it's succeeding. It just feels like a genuine like oh like these this is this genuinely feels like it's of the country it came from, but also feels like really silly and fun. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying to think like I'm imagining if if 
God, I, what, when was the last like genuine expression of American folk music? Like the Oh Brother Where Art Thou soundtrack? I you also know? love that they're, they're they're shooting this on what looks like the speaking of Michael Jackson music videos, like the Beat It, uh, yeah, uh, or like Smooth Criminal music video where they're like in the warehouse. That's just what Estonia. And, looks then, they, like. and then they, 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 <laughs> they pull out and look, it, it is a stage. That's that's for sure, like a. Um, a backdrop or whatever it's it is cool it looks like they spent some money on this which is uh you know it it, it, i i I just love yeah like you're saying like that's that sometimes it's like oh we've just got someone doing like a basic song and sometimes it's like for some reason this like estonian folk rap project we're gonna put a lot of resources behind this (laughs) this is is popping clearly yes and it, it seems like it is i mean yes i would like to hear more Okay, I will set a Google alert for the five minus pull up album. Well, it does like it was literally like, of course, they shot a good music video because it's like, oh, we just released this demo track on like Spotify and people just walking around the streets of Thailand just kept handing me money. So uh, <laughs> here's a music video, I guess. Uh, Estonia cool. is one of the countries that like takes Eurovision seriously. So like they put money into it. Uh, good for them. They, they, they delivered this year and they should be very proud. Yeah. Now, what's what's next in your list, Chris? Because we're going I mean, off now, your list. Now I'm wondering if Jackie and I are in enough of a mind meld that you that you would be able to guess what my <laughs> uh, next one is. I feel I like doing have... the Simpsons thing of like, and you two one, have never met before. <laughs> this, one, this, this one feels easy just because um, they're in alphabetical order, and Finland is next. So, like, yes. I feel like we're not passing Finland. Yeah. No, yeah, of course, it's Windows 95, man, with no rules. Uh, yes. in a very denim themed performance again this is like this is classic like i think the song is good and funny and like the concept is good but it, it, this is like peak what i was saying earlier like 1999 never ended you know it's like it not <laughs> only sure. does it have that like euro dance thing but it's literally the name of the guy is windows 95 man and they're like what is yeah. the theme of our performance it's denim. he emerges from a giant denim egg uh yep. and the, the, yeah. the big concept here is that he's wearing like a nude thong and so they try to make do a lot of like stage jokes uh that he's like actually naked from the waist down and you just like they're constantly like framing people in front of his junk and stuff anyway it's a fun song i, I also highly recommend the uh, music video for this song where he's like a coder in jail but he's also dancing in a sexy jail cell it's um uh, really, really, really great stuff. I, I, I'm fascinated by this in a similar way. It does remind me of like, uh, there's this. Speaking of Australian dance music culture, there's this guy called a uh, Party Boy sixty nine, who like yes. his whole thing is being a DJ on the internet, and he's like not terrible, but he also is like his whole thing is just like wearing like speedos and like mm. little small sunglasses. And the whole thing is just kind of like, look how silly I am. And he, and all of his like original music is very like horny Eurodance adjacent club stuff. And that's what this reminds me of for sure. Although this feels like it's more, uh, it feels more tongue in cheek is what I would say. Like it definitely feels like, they're having a laugh with this one. Yeah. I mean, both this, this entry and Finland's last year entry, which was also my favorite song, but also felt one of the most novelty esque songs in, I mean, it's a, it's a thin fucking line with the Eurovision, but you know, I, I, I you know just, what I mean? I just pulled up the, the YouTube video at the reading description. The track is the artist's first single and a party banger that opposes unnecessarily restrictive rules. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, then the no rules hook of it, I think, is what sells it, right? Because yeah, like yeah. the whole thing is pretty silly as it is, but then you when you add in that, like as the refrain, just it takes it over the top to being um, his his opening monologue with the like "Ooh, you touch my tra la la" voice from like Eurodance <laughs> fame for sure. Of like I'm Windows ninety five man is also great. Um, it was so like last year's finland's entry from last year like there are murals to him in like helsinki at the moment and like everyone was really sad about like um at like the national final like national selection this year in finland because like all the journalists i know who went there were just like yeah they were clearly gearing up to host eurovision this year um Mm. they like pulled out all the stops and stuff and like they had the video game museum which is mostly angry birds but like (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like all the nokia people had to go somewhere and they made angry birds nokia. um that's really funny but then like 
Yeah, and then uh, Caria from last year has been going around giving his uh, his Midas touch, his blessing to a handful of like musicians. He gave his I blessing mean, this feels to Croatia. Very much like it could be like on the same on his like bespoke label or whatever. Mm. Uh, you know, it's very much the same like half electro, half like like with like goofy tongue in cheek metal influences. Uh, yeah, vibe. It really, it really feels that like the key to it is it, this is very close to Planet of the Bass, right? Because the whole like hook of this song is really leaning into like being intentionally silly, right? Like yeah. all of the lyrics of like no rules is how I live, how I find the wing beneath my wings, how I learn to fly. It's all very like faux inspirational. Yeah, Planet of the Bass. Okay, so Planet of the Bass is interesting because it's like if America actually participated in Eurovision. Would that not maybe be the kind of song that you'd be want to like clean up and do a real studio pass of and have that be our actual selection for uh, Eurovision? Like that I feels mean, yeah. more authentic to the Eurovision experience than us being like, actually, yeah, we're gonna send like wh- whoever like a Beyonce track or whatever to to Eurovision and just tr- try to like big dick everyone. No, for sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think, I think that is. I mean, sketch comedy videos are essentially our our Eurovision, unfortunately. <laughs> yes. So that checks out. Weird, weird Al, like the comedians who write their own songs is the closest. Yeah, the, you I, get I mean, the, the the end of the uh, No Rules video is basically ripping the Bound Two video, where the two different versions of Windows ninety five men are straddling each other as they like fly through the clouds. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's um, great stuff. The the hilarious thing that I think has still not actually been determined yet is um, the first the first point of controversy was like does he have to change his name due to copyright uh, when okay. he goes to Eurovision um, that's been cleared up he's allowed to still call himself Windows ninety five man but that's if you've seen yeah but if you've seen the Mega Mix even though he's like running around pretending to be oh, new yes. from the waist down. Yeah, his logo is blurred out. It's like pixelated. Oh, I saw that. Yeah. Yeah. That's so funny. like, I guess funny. yeah. The 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 use of the actual uh, image <laughs> is where they put for some reason adding man onto Windows ninety five is enough to throw them off the scent. It's funny. I'm currently wearing this, this hoodie. I'm wearing is a DJ DS, which is a DJ Dodger Stadium, famously uh-huh. cease and desisted by the by Los Dodger Angeles Stadium. Dodgers. So so they <sighs> only go by the acronym. Uh, yeah, they they were an electronic group, and then recently I was wondering, like, I wonder what they're up to. And uh, one of them was A and Ring the Bob Marley uh, One Love tribute album, and I was like, ah, oh, that's what they're up to. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, good for that guy. Oh god! All right, so uh, um, all right, so let's actually continue this game, Jackie. Can you predict what's oh, next? Oh, that's a great Christmas? question. Um, I want to say Greece. Uh, no, I, I did think about the Greece one. I was thinking about how, see, this is getting, thinking about the Greece one was like my thinking about the regional differences between these, because it is like, you know, the Nordics in Northern Europe have this other than Finland, which, which lo, lo, apparently the Finns love to be silly, but like all the Northern Europe songs are like that, like clean Scandinavian production. Like they are mm-hmm. genetically like pop music experts. UK and Ireland have like a fairly developed like uh, mu- music culture that that fits in with the more like Anglosphere culture, and then Southern Europe, it's like still kind of like techno, uh, like like based. I love how they bust out their traditional uh, annoying instruments that fit right in with like an electronic mm-hmm. music song. So it's like whatever the Greece one has like whatever like it's not what do they call it? Like, not Slovaki like that that weird like. Vuvuzelas oh, type of horn or whatever. Yeah, yeah. It was like seamlessly <laughs> translated into a big like main stage uh, techno lead synth sound. Uh, and it just, I don't know, it's like not as polished, but it's warmer and dancier and just like yeah. goofier. Uh, yeah. And that's what I was talking about. People that have seen the sun. It's, I, I, yes, exactly. I, I did want to bring up the, the, the Greek one because. Um, talking about like uh, sort of the multiculturalism, but also the like the sort of the cultural appropriation. I, I found this one. I, what I found fascinating is that both Greece and Italy are making songs that sound like Rosalia songs. 
mm. which is really funny to me. A, because the actual Spanish selection sounds like an Italo disco song, which is mm-hmm. funny yeah. because it's like, it's like they're, but like also without stepping entirely too outside my box, I know for a fact that like Rosalia being the kind of face of the particular fusion of like reggaeton styles that she sort of popularized Mm. has, has its own cultural appropriation stuff because essentially like reggaeton is like a very Caribbean Spanish music style. And the fact that Rosalia, who is like a white European Spanish person has become like one of the faces of that style of music globally. And like, and not as much the like, Greece one, but the Italy song is like straight up like this is a ripoff of Rosalia down to the yeah. point that, like the visuals like looked like Rosalia music videos, like the braids on the floor and shit. I was like, I'm pretty sure I've seen this somewhere before. So like I was so- really fascinated by that whole like what's going on with like these non-spanish speaking countries clearly being like this is the cool European thing to be right now. Well then also Spain is like we're still trying to be Italy. Like it's really fascinating. So like, have you guys seen the online joke of the global Latino belt? Yes. <laughs> yes. Greece is now I mean, in the global Greece Latino. Is, yes. belt. That's really um, funny. I mean like the, the jokes and like the Eurovision space over this was just like, uh, 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 you know, fucking Spain cells seething at the Greek chats, <laughs> finally bringing reggaeton to, to Eurovision. Because, like, the two genres that are, like, huge in Europe, mm-hmm. but still haven't been, like, managed to get into um, Eurovision or not successfully, there are lots in, like, national selection, is reggaeton and Afrobeat. Um, that totally tracks. I mean... Because- it's yeah. it's what's hap- what's happened in America over the last four years is like two years ago Live Nation realized like we can make money on this like people like this here and I think Europe is a little bit behind that as I might imagine with like the dynamics of this contest and also the dynamics of particularly like Caribbean and and South. Asian and African immigration in Europe, like mm. I can understand why perhaps they're not like embracing that with open arms right away. You know, I mean, like it, if any kind of South American genre makes it big in the states, it's definitely already made it big in Spain. Uh, but it will probably be limited to Spain. Yeah, I mean, we talked about Coco Jambo last last time. It's not <laughs> it's not like those wires don't ever get crossed, but it, but it is. Uh, yeah, th- it seems like something that they're not necessarily going to embrace for the context of, like you're saying, like how how does this appeal to a Slovenian grandmother, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Th- this is a, a more global thought too, but the thing, like watching all of this and you know, all all these and, and thinking about the reabsorption of trends from like America, basically back into European music. The one that I was. The one that I'm most curious about is watching like the 2027 uh, Eurovision entries to see how much the current American resurgence of popular country oh, that's fascinating. gets reabsorbed into uh, European currents, especially because country is like much more specific to America, but also mm. does have a global fascination to it. And it is like what's happening in pop music right now is like, you know yeah. the 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 cultural technology of country just being like reintegrated into our pop landscape. So I, I one could be... imagine that getting exported back to Europe in like starting in like eighteen months. You know, we 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 are for sure going to get some old town road ass Eurovision yes, yes, songs yes. in the next. Oh three years. oh, yeah. that's no, exactly hang what's going to happen. Let's fucking talk about that actually because <laughs> we got one of those this year. It's um, true. Give me- Give me, give me, uh, not, not in the, ooh, that, that, this gets me, oof, okay. So, like, country <laughs> music, <laughs> god damn it, uh, um, country music in general is one of those things where it's like, okay, everything comes from America, you know, cultural, pop cultural mm-hmm. hegemon, everything comes from LA, but then, like, there is, like, a great firewall in Europe against country music, mm-hmm. and because, like, we just, we just we just never really encounter it like and if it does it will be like really really big names will make it sometimes and the two countries they'll make it in are Ireland and the Netherlands for yes, whatever Irish reason. people do love country music uh, yeah. this is one of the biggest one of the biggest Garth Brooks uh, bastions in the world 
but it has to be Garth Brooks. It can't yeah. be any like Rinky Dink, anyone else from Nashville. It has to be Garth Brooks. It'd be like the big kind of superstar. Thing. The yeah. whole European relationship to yeah, Amer- American stuff in that way is fascinating because, like you're saying, there is a block against sort of country music, but the UK love like Americana, like capital yes. A, yeah, like yeah. like roots stuff like that if, uh, it, i think i talked about this last time i was on here but like realizing that europeans were nerds about american stuff the way that i was a nerd about european stuff helped break the spell of europe's like yeah. inherent coolness on me i was like oh they think the stuff that we do is like cool the way that i think new order is cool and i yeah, need I mean, to like un- unlearn that part of my brain like they i mean treat, that's like, essentially jason isabel that's... like like whatever there is like there's definitely in germany you have like the route 66 germans who are like obsessed because this is the country that makes all the cars in the world so they're obsessed with the like the same kind of like open road myth that america has and things like that but it never usually translates to music Mm -hmm. i mean that is that that dialect is like essentially how uh, oh sorry sorry go ahead jackie I was just going to say that, like, I worked briefly with, like, a um, country-leaning kind of soulful Americana artist who was, like, so much bigger in the UK than they were in America. Mm. And it was because, like, yeah, like, that particular audience or whatever had just really latched onto it. I mean, that whole dialectic is, it's, you know, a bit old, but, you know, it's essentially how rock and roll got, you know, the, oh, became yeah, yeah. the dominant form of mute popular music of it's like an, an initial spurt of american innovation around it that then got you know was like just one of many things going on that then went to england and all the like ameriweebos ameribos of of uh, it, it all starts um, with the rolling stones being like hey the blues and then we all hear yeah. the rolling stones and we're like hey and like, the blues, oh the white people, when white people do it. it we can now we can comprehend it yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. There. Okay, so I have I have one old town road style song that was in the mix this year. Beautiful. Uh, not they didn't make it to the Eurovision itself though. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm not to, to, not to get to. Did you guys talk about this all in the Euro dance episode that you did? Because now I'm just thinking about this because you can almost kind of trace a similar trajectory around like electronic dance music, right? Where it's basically like invented and like house and yeah. techno is like an underground yeah, black that, that, that's exactly here. what we talked and then about last when time. i in the 90s when i thought of electronic dance music i think i'm coming cutting in and out but i'm gonna keep going i thought of it as like something that that europeans yeah, enjoy no we lost you a bit well, of I, lost delay. I was just saying that like you know when i thought of dance music in the 90s it was like oh that's something that europeans do you know <laughs> and then exactly, it came yeah. back and became global in a in a in a big way Funny how that yeah, works. Yeah, and now the, the cycle keeps sort of shortening in this way, right? Because you, as we talked about last time, you still have people that are like, what are you talking about? Berlin is the UNESCO heritage site, a uh, place where techno was invented. It's and- never been so over for fucking berlin ever since <laughs> that got announced <laughs> i mean that was the nail in the coffin right as Absolutely. we discussed last time it was already like djs don't want to live here anymore and then you then you seal the deal with that um but yeah no it's it's this weird fascinating sort of life cycle where even now when we are so we are so around the corner of understanding the roots of american dance music like you still have to unlearn like americans still are like yeah but like we need to get to Europe where the club system exists and whatever. Like there still is that like whole infrastructure. And, and I think a, a delightful trend of the last couple of years has North Americans being like, actually, maybe we don't need to go to Berlin. Maybe it's yes. fine if we don't. Maybe no Detroit. Yes, hey, look exactly. at all these empty warehouses in downtown LA. <laughs> wonder if we should I mean, yeah, have like all of the, the club best, all of the best raves, like scenes that are happening like in America are like in places like Pittsburgh and yeah. like it, and like for festivals that happen in upstate New York and shit like, like that. Yeah. Rust Belt stuff, right? Exactly. Presumably. No, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, we've got a bunch of those empty steel warehouses where that are just uh, <laughs> demanding to for uh, hot shirts, churches, to, abandoned uh, buildings, you know, yeah, what yeah, have to you. smash hammers into tires in a rhythmic way. There are there are two things that will create rave culture: deindustrialization and getting bombed to shit in the forties because you fucking deserve <laughs> it. <laughs> True. 
But okay, so there was one Old Town Road song. I have to I have to bring Please this up because share it. they're huge story. I'm actually just gonna I'm gonna share the the link um and you can listen to as much or as little as you'd like. But this was this was the favorite to win Iceland's national selection, uh Bashar Murad's Wild West. Um and it has this kind of like country twang spaghetti western kind of thing to it, but also a bit of like hip hop. Um, and like when everyone thought this was going to win in Iceland, they were like, oh, this is going to come like third in the whole competition, mostly because he's, uh, uh, or partly because I should say, it's a bit unfair to say mostly, partly because he's Palestinian Icelandic. Um, and the whole song is about like how I had to leave Palestine to deal with the, the Wild West. Um, and it was going to be like a fuck Israel surrogate vote until they got like rat fucked in the uh, 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 Icelandic national competition. That's interesting because this is way fucking better than the Icelandic entry. <laughs> oh, God, the Icelandic entry found, is trash. <laughs> I found uh, quite a snooze. Yeah, uh, uh, no, they're like people from like the national broadcaster in Israel were like, campaign like trying to do vote campaigns within iceland to get them to like not vote for this and the whole thing was incredibly like dirty and i will say my favorite part of the actual iceland winner is that the the song is called scared of heights and she's on a platform that's like three steps up (laughs) and then someone like helps her down from the platform to it's really great i was just like yeah Something like sixty four percent of the Icelandic population don't want to be in the song competition this year after all that's happened. So, like, that is really funny. Uh, um, okay, that was that was a little uh, sojourn. Uh, um, no, I really like the Greek context. Entry. <laughs> so we've we've done Greece and Ireland. I mean Iceland. We've talked about Ireland a little in the beginning. That was I the mean, next on my select. Oh, interesting. Uh, on my Ireland. select. Yeah, uh, just because this is, song is so weird. Uh, very very hot topic core. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah it's, for it's sure. presentation. It's about being, I, I like that it it varies wildly between being like hard, like pop, emo rock, like almost um, evanescence-ish to being kind of more bubblegum poppy in the middle. It's yeah, the, 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 the genre switch element of it is definitely yeah. like very jarring. I, I think Ireland is just is just the coolest country in Europe to me. Like they just <laughs> I, I don't know what it is that's in the water there in terms of like them having good, weird taste and stuff. But it just always remains true. It, like, it's the only country in the world where you can have a glass of milk for dinner and it's it's cool. <laughs> like, <Hell yeah. laughs> and it produces this. Uh, uh, but yeah, I don't know. This one's it's just nice and weird. Bambi Thug. Well, yeah, how do we have high hopes God, for I'm that? Frozen again? Come on. Um all right. I'm back. What let's go back down the list. Uh so we've we've covered Ireland. We've covered Greece, so we might as well get to the elephant in the room, right? If we're going, if we're going through this <laughs> in alphabetical order. Um, my first I mean, question, my real one question is: mm. When was this written, and when was it mm. like submitted? Because the mm. lyrics of this song, oh yeah, feel pointed. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to I'm going to summarize the story as best I fucking can, as quickly as I can, because people who've been listening to the series have heard it like Several ten times. times now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, sorry, sorry, you guys had I keep frozen in and out. You guys are talking about the Netherlands song, right? No, no, no we're Israel. jumping to the, the the elephant in the room. Oh, the Israel okay. selection. Okay, yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it basically looked like so Israel were submitting songs and. Uh, every time they submitted a song, the European Broadcasting Union kept coming back like, this is too political, change the lyrics, or you can't compete. And the national broadcaster was like, no, we are a proud people, blah, blah, blah. Uh, we will not be changing our lyrics. Until on Saturday, 3rd of March, I believe, when it looked like that Palestinian guy was going to win in Iceland. Um the president of Israel, the Herzog went down to the broadcaster, basically said, cop the fuck on. 
change the lyrics because we are not we are not going to hand this competition to the Palestinian entrant. We need to submit something. So the song they submitted, Hurricane, is a reworked version of a song that was originally called October Rain. I was that's fuck god damn it. I yeah. I literally was listening to this song like this is this is uh very, very, very pointed except for this one lyric right at the center of the song. <laughs> very conveniently placed. It's weird how this kind of stands out from the rest of it. I wonder yeah, you may so also funny. notice that the music video is very reluctant to ever zoom in or give you a close up of Aiden Galan actually singing any of the lyrics because she is singing something else in that recording. <laughs> <laughs> That's really funny. Yeah. We talked about this when you were on Jabo, but yes, I it's 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 very funny how many did they, they had to do like six revisions of this before they got it in yeah they had another song called dancing forever which is dancing about forever die of course. To grave. Yes. yeah so um yeah it's it basically looked like they were playing chicken that like the national broadcaster realizing that this competition was going to be held in like with a bunch of countries that do not like israel right now in like a town in Sweden that I believe everyone in that national broadcaster would like call a no go zone because the town is too Muslim <laughs> or whatever. Malmo, Sweden. And um yeah, like there's already been like blood thrown at like the Eurovision sign in Malmo and shit. Like people have stormed stages at national finals. Like it's going to be a fucking mess. And they were trying to save themselves the embarrassment of like broadcasting on national television. Hey, Europe actually doesn't like what we're doing. So like, yeah. So I found uh, a really incredible uh, article about this song written uh, in on March 12th in the Jerusalem Post. And uh, they take an incredible stance on this article, which is essentially they uh, say that this song is going to embarrass Israel, not because of the political content of the song, but because it's boring and it sucks. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's a big part of it. <laughs> it's you know what? Like, oh, it's real. It's there really, are... Let me just read this real quick part of it. The song is a, a half measure. It might be suitable for Eurovision format in terms of production and performance, but it itself is not excellent, not even very good. Uh, another glaring flaw is that, uh, in, except for a sentence or two in Hebrew that Golan sings, it's all in English. Generally, I understand the need for English, but in a period where Israeli existence is an existential danger, a song that is in, mostly or entirely in Hebrew would carry an explanatory message that Golan is here to perform. I was hoping this song would touch me. It did not. <laughs> I mean, that's oh, the thing is that they feel so like they, they have so many off ramps to just be like, you know what? Not our year for the, for this, but I guess it seems like everybody's going to be full speed ahead and they're just going to perform it at the ceremony and everybody is going to be universally pissed about it. The contestants, the entries, the judges, the viewers. Yeah. The Eurovision live show has been perfecting over the years since like since Russia annex Crimea have been preventing have, have been perfecting like the live anti booing technology of just like making it seem like that everyone in the room isn't fucking booing uh, for the people watching at at home. I think that's going to be deployed this year. Yeah, they're going to be pioneering uh, new uh, experimental forms of AI to transform everybody's <laughs> frowns in the audience into grins. <laughs> Make it ever make everyone look like they're happy. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh God. Um, one Snapchat filter that turns everybody into like the grinning, googly eyed bobblehead. For some strange reason, everyone in Malmo tonight seems to have the Chad face and uh, <laughs> <laughs> and cat ears. Oh, strange. Um, so, Chris, any other notable mentions? Uh, I, I what? There's one more that I want to talk about in depth. Uh. I, I will just quickly shout out uh, Moldova. Uh, this song isn't super awesome, but I do love that in their live performance, uh, they have like five women all singing together who then pull violin bows out of quills in their back and play violin live. I thought that that was a, uh, a, a nice yeah. touch. Um, what else did I like? That was Natalie Barbu from Mo yeah, Moldova. Barbu, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I like the San Marino entry, Magara. 11 oh. uh performing 11 11 do you have anything to, to say on that did they astroturf this one, again did they hire a ringer 
<laughs> no. So you've mentioned two great countries here because Moldova and San Marino are the only countries that have like open auditions uh, and will televise mm-hmm. some of the open auditions. There is like there was one guy I've forgotten his name who auditions every year from Moldova to like saying he cannot sing. He is like 80 something, uh, but he goes every time and he performs and he didn't perform last year and everyone was scared shitless that he had died. But he came back this year and like Eurovision Twitter was just popping off just because like, yeah, the old Moldovan man is back. But with what's happening with the San Marino entry, the only like particularly interesting uh, uh, thing going on there, if I remember her name, uh, uh, Vigara, is it? Yeah, Magara. Um, Yeah, she's purely in the competition to get revenge on her uh, ex-husband because he's a Swedish songwriter who lives in Malmo and okay. she's like going to the competition to be like, look, I fucking made it. Um, he used to write songs for her and now he doesn't. So yeah. Uh, that's awesome. And more power to her. This song is also very goofy. Also very hot, hot topic core. Uh, mm-hmm. But I hope that she gets to twist the knife. This in that was guy. the one I, I talked about where the, uh, the guys in their police vests and hats are partying yes, yes, with yes. all the rockers. Although I like that this has kind of a, yeah, like a, a mall pop punk sort of tilt to it. It mm. feels very like Europeans just heard about Paramore. Yes. What was that band from a few years ago that was, uh, Jackie would know this, so who's, that got big on TikTok and then everybody got mad at for being like industry plants or whatever that had like real uh, dumb, like uh, all this. female pop punk uh, type thing. Oh, yeah. that's a good question. I I'm not remembering off the top of my head. Do you know what it, I'm talking about though? Yeah, I, I was like, it, it sounds vaguely familiar. Um, I remember this. I remember this. Yeah, like, yeah. anyway, filtering through into Twitter. It, yeah. it, it's like that. That, but they're because <laughs> it's from San Marino. They're just because it's European. There seems to be like a, a an implied authenticity about it because it's like I could. I guess they could really still be like that over there. No anyway, one's an the, industry what, plant here. It's all yeah. very earnest. <laughs> anyway, the, but the one last one that I really want to talk about is Just Klein Europapa from the Netherlands, which appears to yeah. be, again, a Eurodance pro-European Union anthem uh, by a Dutch guy. Best song, best song uh, of the week. Not even close. You, this, is, this is your vote? Yeah. I, I yeah, just, yeah. The, the mix of interests here is just very delightful for me. Uh, and it reminds me of when we were when we toured the UK last. Uh, there were big like, it's oh, still yeah. ongoing like uh, Brexit protests, and then one freak in front of Westminster in a full EU bodysuit with like a ten foot tall EU flag, waving it in front of Parliament, and just one of him, and then a bunch of like ham faced taxi drivers uh, demanding <laughs> Brexit, and. Uh, that brave EU sicko. Uh, I think that this is the <laughs> anthem for him. Uh, so th- yes, this is this is one that I r- was really entertained by. Also, the haircut on this man, my God! Oh, yeah, we love. Uh, um, his, his name rhymes with toast. It's Yoast. I've been I've been told Yoast. this because uh, it's 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 Dutch. It's German, but weird. Um, I, actually, I want Jackie's thoughts on this because there is there is. This is this is one of my favorites because it does the thing of seeming like a joke song, but then there's actually something to it. Oh yes, it's it's incredible the the whole thematics of the song and the way that it manages simultaneously be this like bop, but also like you said, I, I turned on the English language captions and it is about like immigration, but also like about the keeping the European Union together. Yeah. And uh, it's 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 I, I the production value of this one I think is the best. Like the music yeah. video is really good. Yeah. His uh his suit with the shoulders, like the shots of them driving down in the carts. Oh, oh it's all so good. Yeah, there. Yeah. So I, 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 a club jam about how great freedom of travel uh, is. <laughs> <laughs> so. The added context of this is one, like a lot of people in the Netherlands, this one has charted quite well within the Netherlands, Belgium, it's expanded into other countries. It's like, if I talk to anyone who doesn't pay attention to Eurovision as much as I do elsewhere in Europe, this is the song from this year they've heard already. Um, and like, I I have to explain Yoast a little bit because Yoast is a seasoned performer. Uh, um, he's like, 
a Dutch rapper slash does a lot of stuff with Gabber, uh, um, which is a genre of music very, very popular in the Netherlands, uh, mm. stereotypically so. Everyone in the Netherlands is very excited that they're finally sending Gabber <laughs> because you don't you don't see that in the mega mix, but there's like a a yeah the, the big breakdown right at the end of it yeah 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 um, the song is but the other thing about Yost is that he does these kind of like terminally online I'm a fundamentally broken person lyrics he does a lot of just like oh man I went to the rave last night I should call my therapist kind of shit um because the man was <laughs> the man was orphaned when he was 12 um like in a ridiculously tragic way like his dad died of cancer then his mom died of a heart attack a year later and the song that he's submitting this year is about like um i miss my dad is basically the whole song um yeah it's going to be I'm excited to see the Euro sick, the, the EU sickos kind of incorporate the song because it does feel very like, um, it does feel kind of akin to like the Republican politician bringing out the like born in the USA mm. kind of shit because a lot of the lyrics are also just like, the whole thing is when his dad was alive, he was like, one day, son, we're going to travel, we're going to go on holidays when we're not dirt poor anymore. And then he died. So he talks about the fact that like, it, I have everything in the world, but you, I have all the time in the world to go to like France and shit, but I still just miss my dad is basically the song. So um, sono in Italia, but it still hurts. Yes. Yeah. I, I, I'm interesting. Like ich, ich bin in Deutschland, aber I, ich bin so allein. Like I am in Germany, but I'm so alone. I'm so I'm alone in Italy, but I still feel the pain. See, that's fascinating. Without that context, I thought I watching this, I thought this was purely somebody who just w- loved, you know, the, a, a, an open economic zone. <laughs> yeah, the layer the layers are fascinating. I I love, like you're saying, that it feels so authentic to the country that it came from in this very silly way, like down to the 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 way that yeah, it's like. Why try to trend chase? Just just crank the dial back to 1999 <laughs> and, and lean yep. even further into it. Absolutely. Um, any other notable mentions from you, Jackie? I think that covered everything that I really wanted to talk about. I did really like uh, Sweden's was not um, particularly like like jaw dropping in terms of the the visuals or anything, but the live performance where they're like dancing with all the laser lights is very, it's very like, uh, dated. It, it's like fit fast. The, I like this one unforgettable. Cause it's like a boy band song, but also like this rave song. Um, it, there, it does from, remind me of, um, kind of like the French house revival that happened in like the two thousands, kind of like a yeah, yeah. kind of song. For sure, yeah. Yeah, it's like again, what the, if what if the weekend justice sort of sound, but then like a bunch of uh, twinks all singing. Yeah, we got twinks. Yeah, or we like if if uh, if in sync never broke up, like what music would they be making this year? You know. <laughs> yeah, it's very Kavinsky uh, coded, yeah. like that whole kind of like yeah, like all the synth wave sort of like the visuals of it, yeah. But yeah, I thought that one was pretty good. Uh, I'm trying to think if there are any others that we haven't hit on this episode. Um, but yeah, most of the others kind of, like we are saying earlier, fall into one of those like very baseline categories. Like the Germany song is like a super Imagine Dragons type beat. Yeah. Like a lot of that kind of stuff going That's on. That's coming last though. I, I'm, I'm, I'm calling it now. Germany's coming last again. It's fucking right. miserable. All right. So I think that after this review... My top three, I yeah. think it's got to be um, Croatia, Estonia, and Netherlands. I think that that would be my top three ballot for this year. I think um, Estonia and Netherlands are clearly, clearly up there. I think net, um, yeah, I think those are those are both probably the ones that you go with this year. I, right. I like Ireland too. I liked uh, I like a couple others, but yeah. Uh, so what to... are what, what what are the uh the, the the betting favorites then like who for the real euro watchers who who who's <laughs> who are the favors favorites 
Yeah, yeah. So this is this is what I was going to get to because like, so unlike last year, it, we don't have like stupidly clear favorites the competition is actually a bit more like wide open of who could win nice. um i think there there are four let me just check the... wow i'm fascinated by these these bookmaking odds i have just pulled up here so currently <laughs> oh, no. currently doing, switzerland Jackie? switzerland is in first yep. place yep oh interesting. Uh, i mean that we I, did not talk about it mm. stood out a little to me but i was like again you know the ones that really stand out to me are the ones that have like an element of weirdness or unusualness to them. There is, and then there's like a base yeah, level that, that are really just like replacement. Different. And then like, there's this kind of mid tier level where I'm like, yeah, this is competent. You so know, I will, I can, I can explain what's going on here because like you did arrive at a handful of songs that are like big hitters this year. I think the, mm-hmm. The top five at the moment, fifth place is Ukraine, but like Ukraine's numbers usually get like overestimated this far out from the competition. Um, they are juggernauts in the competition because like I think they're the only country that has made it to the final every year. Mm-hmm. And like their national final, they vote for like which song they want to send in their government everything app. Like the same app that you file for like child benefits is also how you f- like vote. That's incredible. That's awesome. Uh, um, the DIA app, I believe it's called. Um, anyway, so they're like a big contender, but the major two, right, is you have, you've already touched on Netherlands and Croatia, which are going to be like these huge televote winners, yep. uh, like people at home are going to be voting for them, but like no one really sees how they're going to appeal to the juries. Mm-hmm. And then the two songs that are going to do well with the televote and probably do very well with the juries are Italy and Switzerland. So gotcha. that's why they're in the running. That's the reason Switzerland is impressive is because uh, I don't want to say the man because he's non-binary. The boy, no, that's gendered as well. <laughs> Nemo, <laughs> God fucking damn it! I'm trying so hard, people. Um, Nemo, Nemo, uh, um, wonderful musician, has pipes for fucking days. Like they do like these kind of rap choruses and like normal kind of sing songy choruses, and then just the chorus is just hit like them pelting fucking notes beyond belief. And everyone was like, oh, this is kind of good until like a video leaked of him doing it in, like live with the microphone about like six feet away from his fucking voice. And everyone was like, oh, oh, OK, they can do this. So that's kind of why. And then like Italy's just like fun, girly pop. Let's. Yeah. So that's the well, lay of the land this year. Well, again, looking at these odds, I might have to put I might have to put a uh, a a. a, a a 10 euro on Netherlands <laughs> or Croatia for the, for the upset. Oh, absolutely. Um, I think Croatia has the edge personally, because they have the Cinderella story of just like, it'll be Croatia's first win. And like, mm-hmm. this guy is poor and living in a one bedroom flat in like Vienna. And he's come back to Croatia to make this song. And it's like a slam dunk or whatever. Like it, it's, there's a nice story there. And the Netherlands have won far too recently, so no one gives a shit. Okay, great. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, Yoast. Yeah, but yeah, that's uh, that's the lay of the land at the moment. Do I have any other like fun scandals to relate to people? Um, oh, actually, I, I I do have one song I want to ask about, which is Luxembourg, because this is their thirty year triumphant return to the competition. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to remember which. Oh, there you uh, go. <laughs> I was just I was just impressed when I saw Luxembourg that you know their the their population was large enough to generate a a pop act you know no no yeah, like okay. certain... this is uh I remember now this is one of the ones that that sort of uh splits the difference between two categories which would be the empowerment rise song and the vaguely reggaeton coded world pop song where it's 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 called fighter and it's clearly like a Yes, I, I, I'm a bad independent woman sort of deal, but that also it's got this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, to to like Luxembourg, small country, but has money for days. So like that's a that's a huge part of this. And they returned after 30 years. Like Ireland, they kind of like got a lot of wins. They have five wins historically, but they did that because like back when the competition forced you to speak uh, uh, um, a language that's in your country. That gave an advantage to Ireland because we spoke English, and it gave an advantage to Luxembourg because they speak both French and German. 
Oh, well, uh, so were... like, I just was like, I was like, I wonder who this person is, where this person is from then. And uh, this person is Israeli born Luxembourg. Yes, ah. yes, 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 yes. So, and then their national final competition was also just like, we shipped in a bunch of people who run the national selection in Israel. Like, Everyone was talking, if Israel got kicked out, everyone was saying like, oh, Luxembourg is going to be the Israeli surrogate vote. <laughs> well, um, she was educated at the International School of Luxembourg, all right? She has a very yeah, personal yeah. connection to the country. Yes. <laughs> um, but like, oh, it's it's also relatively tragic because at the same time, like, she does like singer-songwriter stuff in her spare time. They literally just like picked her up and said like, okay, you're doing something completely different now. Yeah, I mean, that is one of the funny things is about like figuring out who can be the vessel to which through which to channel like an, an Eurovision infrastructure through. And it's like mm. in a place like Luxembourg where it's, you have the whatever committee is doing it, just like kind of going out into the town square and being like, all right, is, any, is anybody here a singer? Raise your hand. Yeah. Okay, well, we'll make you the, the Eurovision contestant this year. It was yeah. It's basically going into the town square in Luxembourg, Luxembourg, and being like, okay, which one of you like Portuguese economic refugees and or stupidly <laughs> rich bankers want to be like a pop star? <laughs> so yeah, that's where we're at. Uh, well, this has been real as always. I do unfortunately ha- have to kind of uh, move on at twelve thirty. Um, yeah, no, we should. We can. Uh, um, okay. Final thoughts, and we can wrap up. Love yeah, your vision. A fantastic uh, year of selections. I'm excited to see who wins. I would love to be back to discuss further. Uh, uh, it was a fun time. Excellent. Yes. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you as uh, always for opening the door to the Eurovision for me. No worries, uh, and thank you, listener, for listening to this. As as you know, only uh, only Mister God knows the mini series where we talk about Eurovision is basically a large promotional vehicle for Eurovision. Eurovision will be happening on the eleventh of May. Twitch.tv forward slash Corner Spady. Or if you're in Berlin, there are still tickets available. Come technically not watch the Eurovision with us because there is a boycott, and we are good boys and girls. Uh, um, and Nemo's and everyone else. Uh, we will be playing the music videos, so you get to see the the clips of uh, um, Zari just you know drifting in a in a Greek taxi. So have fun. I, with I that. will say this is a, a visual medium, like the Indie Heads podcast. If you just listen to these songs today, you got to pull these videos up. You got to see what's going on with the production value, with the yeah. visuals. I agree. Very crucial. It's it's that. worth it's worth just poking around the the videos and and, and checking out. What what the hell's going on over there? <laughs> <laughs> and the links for everything are in the description. And it leaves me to say, Jackie, Chris, thank you so much as resident music knowers for coming on <laughs> and experiencing the Eurovision. I don't. After this is done, I just I listen to audiobooks. <laughs> hey, happy happy to provide our expertise. Happy to be here. Yes, excellent. All right, and we will see you when only Mister God knows. <laughs>